Oh yes. I'm ready for this. I think let's get this under underway. My name is Julius Esegu. I am the executive director of Teso Karamoja Media Agency. It is an organization that is spearheading efforts to reverse the negative effects of climate change in Teso and Karamoja through tree growing. Karamoja uh, is uh, a place that is located in uh, northeastern Uganda and uh, it is a place that uh, comparably you would say is larger than Rwanda uh, in terms of uh, you know the scope or coverage. Karamoja is a place that has about uh, 1.2 million people and uh, it has uh, a number of districts that total to about nine and the districts that we're talking about are um, Abim, uh, Amudat, um, Kabong, uh, Nakapiripirit, uh, you have uh, Karenga which was recently created and then you have, of course, the mother district, which is uh, Moroto. Uh, we have Kotido, and then one of them is, of course, uh, Napak. Yeah, now, this is a region that is uh, uh, punctuated with a, a number of activities, and the main one being, of course, uh, uh, cattle herding. Uh, it is a place that has got uh, uh, abundance in terms of minerals, and that makes it a very rich, rich place. Uh, Karamoja also has uh, uh, one of the largest parks in this country and that is Kidepo National Park and uh, if it's one of the places that you'd really wish to visit uh, with beautiful landscapes, beautiful sceneries and uh, of course uh, the savanna ve vegetation even makes it more um, uh, pristine uh, uh, and Karamoja generally gives you the kind of atmosphere that you'd want to be in uh, if you're a visitor uh, who is looking out for a place that uh, is, 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 is good to be. But of course, one thing that makes Karamoja outstanding also is the, 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 the richness of its culture, uh, the heritage. Uh, Karamoja has a very rich cultural heritage and this makes it really that part of the country that you'd really want to, to visit. Karamoja is uh, primarily a pastoralist region and uh, with its economy largely dependent on uh, uh, cattle herding. Uh, the Karamojong people view this as uh, one of the most sustainable ways of uh, you know, uh, their livelihoods, uh, of course, but in a challenging environment that they inhabit or that they live in. The pastoralists generally uh, uh, have always for, uh, faced a challenge, and the biggest challenge that currently they're facing is uh, uh, the issues of climate change, and which has anyway ravaged the region for several decades. But it's one of the most daunting challenges that Karamoja is faced with right now. This place is called Kalalua. Look where Karamoja is. Kapulitini and Rhino Wood. At the mark, Anchor Rio Potte, I told you about Kwan Karaboy. Adaura Badaun. Ramunan with Yaran again, Uriaman with Timogino, the Yakudan, 
ani taya danga mana kata wa ngone dio pe ngone ti ane kwa ka ida ya ga onya ma ngi mumwa ngulu pe ani arama la kini ni bo ya ngo aka upe ti anga ki ti alu ruti ni jiga me ya ta ma gu ya to me ya ta no ta lo ro o te na ta mo da ta ni aku ari ta ke mo aku go kiti ju be ngi do do li o te ni moro to aki gel aki gel ange de linga aru bo jana ya bu ni ne awar tu ma yo ko ki pi ane ni awar tu ma yo ko chu ma da ane ni o fe do ya ko pa na jiga bo e kilo na ki pi e bo e ki na ye tu mo ri cha wa dio na pe a ta ne lu pe lu e bo e ki na ya ta na e ki cha ngu pe yo ngo ta ya ka bi dia ma ma ti ma ma ti ma ngu ni ti ma ma ngu ma alo to na bo ni ni ngu ye alo bo ni ni ka ko be be kare mo jo e ya ngi mo ngo e ne na ko ji ko Uli ara ye denge to mulu e go nda ku. E ya nga ponga. Mune nya mi o. E twari tai e baral. E ya ngo moy. Ka ngi do me. Mune ya moy do ba tari ka ngi tian. Ter ya me tian ko ni. E nya mi. Tala kari. Ani ara e bo ba ko di kop. Ako ay kebudar. Ani ko pa na ay mo ay magenta kujuna. For the Karamojong people, animals are their lifeline. And uh, cattle keeping is a cherished tradition uh, within their communities. And I, this is something that they have done for generations. And every other generation that comes out of Karamoja embraces uh, cattle keeping because they, at, they, touch, they attach a lot of value uh, to cows uh, than anything else. <laughs> a change in the sub-regional climate and one of the things is really generally a shift of seasons. We are also seeing floods. The sub-region is getting more, much more rain, flooding and so forth and very what you call flash floods. That is sort of shaping the way the local the local dynamics around access to resources in terms of water, in terms of pasture. Uh, during, during the dry season, a Karmojong uh, rather moves further than selling out this car. A Karmojong would accept to starve for food than selling a, a cow for money. More than 12 types of water sources have been um, established in uh, uh, the sub-region, uh, with of course boreholes being uh, the most common, uh, numbering to about over 1,000. Uh, which accounts for about 81% um, of the total uh, water sources um, in Karamoja sub-region. Most of these uh, boreholes sometimes dry up and uh, even the streams, the, uh, the streams that are there sometimes dry up and that renders most of the Karamojong really uh, in dire need of water. So you find that sometimes the water sources are even shared with animals. Even the valley dams are shared with animals. Water facilities are usually constructed by government, but uh, the maintenance is a shared responsibility of government. Uh, usually represented by the relevant district uh, local government uh, to undertake the maintenance and rehabilitation.
uh, the government puts their bar on. It's supposed to be community owned. So, the community members, we form what we call the water user committees. Now, a water user committee has many, many responsibilities, including management of that water facility. It's the responsibility of the water user committee to engage the community members, especially on a monthly basis. If they can contribute something, little maybe per house or some 500 or shillings. <laughs> Ele muntou no tomar ninguém a não manat. Até a morrer muntou a mundo que era tua chunu tu nem zelenga. Tato baixo na raça o mar. Ele muda ninguém muntou a terra mais muntou a na de de de. Tô guia lá rata tato baixo na raça o mar. Aí botou a na mão para ele muda ninguém muntou. Ele muda para ninguém tu nem nada na itia que não tá. Muita coisa a botar nem que o rolo tá botar. Só já que tá o cheiro do ar aí nesse peito. Ministry of Water Environment usually gives the districts, all the nine districts of Karamoja. Uh, grants. This is always sent to the district. One uh, to, to to help in rehabilitating some of the boreholes that have been rendered maybe dysfunctional because of some uh, some problems that the communities may not be in position actually to to put it right. But also to construct some new uh, uh, water points. But in order to promote ownership of the facility. They levy a very small fee. Uh, it is a per, per source, per borehole, is 400,000 per year. So depending on how many users are there, this supposed and how many households, this is then spread uh, to the households. The question is whether this fee structure generally, first of all, is more of a burden to the population uh, in terms of affordability and uh, whether it is even uh, it's able to help address the, the issue of water scarcity in, uh, in the sub-region. But ultimately, we see that there is a very close relationship uh, between the struggles uh, for water and the issue of food insecurity in Karamoja. And uh, when you look at um, uh, the data that um, stems from uh, the IPC, uh, the reports over the last five years, for example, you realize that uh, a number of people are still experiencing food insecurity in Karamoja, uh, which is increasing across the Karamoja districts, and which, about, which are about nine in total. And uh, the disparity in this alone uh, between the districts really paints a very disturbing picture about uh, the situation in Karamoja as a sub-region but also calls for uh, action that is uh, you know, targeted at addressing some of these challenges. The government policy has been to really you know, support in a massive way the, the growing of crops. Um, even if it's clear that this is not rewarding. And so government took advantage of the successful disarmament in 2010. Uh, Museveni's wife, uh, Janet Museveni, was minister in, in Karamoja. And she, they, they thought this was the, the tipping point, the moment in which uh, Karamoja would change its livelihood, if you like. And, and so they brought lots of inputs to support um, crop growing. Uh, of course, it wasn't successful, and by 2015, 2016, we could see, uh, of course, also including from pressure from people like us and, and others, you could see that you know they were changing because every year they were harvesting uh, nothing from these gardens. Ninety-six percent of the total population were food insecure of children. The, senior citizens, you know, the vulnerable categories of people, the PWDs, the persons living with HIV AIDS are grossly affected by this current uh, food security situation in the district. He died of hunger, three seasons in a row without a good harvest. The old man was taken from us by hunger. When we were expecting the rains to be continuing, 
uh, the rains withdrew. So sorghum dried up in the fields. And so there, there was no harvest. And so for that case, you found that in the 2020 as a food security assessment, there was about 40% of the Karamoja sub-region households that needed food aid. Now 40% is quite a lot. Sorghum is good because it's a grass, it can survive. The best probably would be how do we improve the sorghum varieties in the sub-region so that the people can, uh, can harvest more per unit area. How do we improve the, do the plant breeding in that area to be able to allow that the sorghum varieties that they are planting are climate, uh, to, uh, climate change tolerant or drought tolerant, drought resistant or drought escaping. The pastoralist is the farmer. Every farmer also tries to have livestock. And by the way, they, they farm because they want to buy livestock. So it's like uh, that, that input and output um, um, model. The food security in the sub-region was dependent on livestock. So if you have been to the sub-region and you find a household that doesn't have cattle or goats or sheep, then traditionally if you are using the indirect indicators of food insecurity, that household would be food insecure at most. The Karamoja sub-region stores food in the granaries. So if you are not able to find a, a household having a granary, then indirectly that you can be able to be assured, assured somehow that that household is food insecure. Our food is stored in these granaries after harvest. It's been four seasons with no food stored inside. Take a look at the other granary for example. It's now ruined because you don't have anything to put inside. For years it has served as my food store. Four seasons without a successful harvest. Kotido district, for example, is the richest uh, and uh, it is the crown jewel of uh, Karamoja. But ironically, of course, um, the district uh, has the fewest uh, resources and facilities in terms of water uh, coverage. Uh, the scarcity is very evident and yet this is the lifeblood uh, that has to sustain the people but also as well as sustain, uh, you know, the, the animals or the cattle. When the droughts come in, between uh, November up to March, you find the place is totally dry. The grass is, is, is dry. Our animals uh, don't have really somewhere for, for water. We only have these forms here, which are seasonal. Once it's dry, uh, dry season, they also dry. So I believe that um, Karamoja generally, not only just zeroing down to Kotido, requires an affirmative action to be able to address the scarcity of water, to augment pastoralism, but as well as livelihoods. <coughs> Well, this place where we are is Dope. It's a river. It is one of the, the longest rivers that is, uh, cuts across two districts. Or actually, it starts from uh, Karenga, a place called Gueres in uh, Kalapata. So it comes all the way. It crosses Kabom and uh, he comes to Kotido, finally it stops in a place called Kamoro. Here, when water, when it is a wet season, there is nobody who crosses here. There is nobody. He has even claimed so many lives. But uh, at the time, it's now dry. Not more, than, not more than two rivers flow all year round in Karamoja. All of these are seasonal river, rivers. 
and, and most of them have sun uh, deposits. So if it takes a few days or weeks before, before rain uh, comes, then of course it dries up. And well, may, definitely not now. It, 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 the water level just goes down. And, and if you just uh, sh use a shovel to, to remove some, you can easily get water. So this goes until maybe uh, March, if it's good, when there's still some water in the riverbeds. This is where they sell the cows. As the men are selling the cows around here, women are also outside there waiting with maybe donkeys to carry the food that will be bought after the cows have been sold. In a normal year, this is not the time to sell livestock because you are getting crops, you are harvesting. This is not the time to sell. That is happening because people are stressed because they are not secure, they are not feeling secure. So they are trying to take the risk away from themselves. The pastoralists within the Karamoja subregion have entered the money, money economy by selling their livestock hard, selling their livestock to get their money to buy food. If the subregion assures you to be able to raise good cattle or good sheep or good uh, goats, and you're able to trade it to buy uh, by maize meal and other essentials, that is still okay. What is now the problem is that the climate variability and change is having an impact on the quality of that livestock. When you look at uh, people coming to market when there are so many like this, you must know that there is a food shortage. And that is why they want to exchange this and sell other, uh, get other items to take home because there is already a problem with the food shortage. Hey, you are not going to go to the house. Like in the chick, you are not going to go to the house. You are not going to go to the house. You are not going to go to the house. You are not going to go to the house. You are not going to go to the house. You are not going to go to the house. You Give the other money. We to the So I need the money. I need the money. I give it. I'm not angry. I give it. I'm to go to the No way. So for the year, we are the million. The other thing is that we Eh, to carry our bag, we are to carry the bag. We are to go to the market. We are not going to buy any other thing. We are There's a lot of cows, but some are small, small. So for us, we buy for slaughter. We don't buy the small, small one. When we are in the dry season. We, we, we normally get loads because you know here there is no water. 68. Yeah. When I was a kid, we didn't even have these markets like this one of cattle market by that time. No. The animals were few. And even the population had not yet grown. You know? Now, as the, the animals uh, increased, people also increased. So that is why the problem now of water becomes. Uh, those other days too were not pronounced. Uh, uh, they were not pronounced. I have observed firsthand how climate change impacts our local biodiversity. Rainfall has become more unpredictable and dry periods have been longer. Uh, putting a huge uh, strain on our water and pastures. Many of our rivers uh, in the region are seasonal and uh, when they dry up they not only disrupt uh, the livelihoods of the people and the pastoralists in particular but also uh, they endanger the aquatic life such as the lungfish uh, which die during uh, dry seasons. So climate change is also um, changing our way of life and culture. We are witnessing a, a transition from pastoralism to uh, farming as water, uh, pastures and food uh, become scarce. However, um, this transition exhausts uh, the grazing land and uh, the plant uh, matter that originally provided food uh, for our animals 
and altering the very you know, nature of Karamojong life or way of life. It is indeed a very big concern that the biodiversity of Karamoja is under threat. And the very core of Karamoja is changing, even before our eyes today. In 2009, the government, through the Department of Water for Production, intervened in the drought problem by constructing approximately five dams alongside other water facilities like the valley tanks and the windfalls that are existent in Karamoja. The primary objective of these uh, interventions uh, was to limit the movement of the pastoralists uh, to the neighboring subregions and even to Kenya in search of water during the dry spells. Uh, early 90s, before uh, the construction of this dam, we, uh, we used to suffer moving from one place to another for the cows because there is no water. We moved from here to Soroti looking for water for animals. Those days when the, there is no dam here, nobody was. Well, we found like only a few members were staying there. And after the construction of this dam now, now the community now is some is very large now, not, a, not a, like those days. Uh, the community is happy. This dam is now generating even money. Like uh, we have uh, fish. Uh, also, to help the community right now, we have four villages where people are not been access to get water. The project of uh, PCND now, they are, we are getting so uh, they are, uh, we are using water for what? for irrigation system dry during the dry season, and also uh, helping our cows. A check dam is uh, of capacity two million one hundred thousand cubic meters. Uh, we are talking about two point one billion liters of water that can be that can be stored uh, in that facility. Uh, initially, it was just meant to, to, to give water to livestock, and this could serve up to about 245,000 livestock units. Uh, to date, it is still functional. It's in a good state, and it's serving the purpose. There is the channel connecting, goes like this, connecting to those mountains. That's where, where does water comes after here. We have the channel again, water will pass the other side. So that the, the water will not destroy what? The, the dam. <laughs> now we are. See how the thing is. This is where water, this is where the, the stream, water goes up to there. See that pipe? This is why they control water now, after the main, what? The main switch. Then water goes the other side. On this side, they don't switch from here. We have the, the, the stream the other side. They used to switch, not here. Here, we don't have natural streams, natural rivers we use underground water. So underground water cannot flow to communities uh, by gravity. We have to pump it to give it the relevant, the necessary head. So that is the most suitable technology we have here. In uh, Amudat district uh, in particular, communities are coming up with uh, local innovative solutions such as uh, uh, sand in ponds 
to access clean water. Uh, in the effort of government trying to curb the problem of water for production in Karamoja sub-region, there, there has been plans to, to undertake implementation of Lope multipurpose dam. Uh, this dam is a, to be constructed in Napak district in the Lope sub county. There was a project, a design which was made to pump water to the top of Napak hill, and then from there it would gravitate throughout Karamoja up to Kabong, because that's the highest spot. So that is a project which we are going to launch. Uh, the estimated uh, storage as per the design is 135 million cubic meters. Uh, designs have already been completed and in Feb, February uh, of this year, His Excellency the President uh, issued a directive to the Minister of Water Environment to source funding from UK Export Finance. Now, UK Export Finance is currently funding uh, solar-powered water supply systems and irrigation schemes across the country. This is phase one of the project. So once the first phase, which is uh, taking three years, uh, which will be ending in around two, uh, 2024. Uh, the second phase, they are now supposed to give funding uh, towards the construction of Lope Multipurpose Dam. Now this dam uh, will not only handle livestock, it is going to supply water uh, to Cotido Municipal uh, and also Morto Municipal, as well as the Karamoja Industrial Park, which is located just near Morto Town here. So it is going a long way to solve the problem of uh, water scarcity in the sub-region. We anticipate that by 2025, construction will begin. Karamoja's culture is at crossroads. Water scarcity and dwindling pastures are looming. Can we guarantee its survival? It's a big question. That answer lies in what we can do now and do together. Yeah, that's